let's say you met a stranger on the street and he asked you what lacrosse was. How would you answer that? Uh, I'd say lacrosse is the oldest sport in North America. It's the most indigenous game to our area. Um, it's the fastest sport on two feet. It's the most fun spectator, player, parent sport on the planet. Um, and mostly that, unlike every other sport, uh, you're part of something bigger. Uh, like I, I mentioned before, you're, you, don't, you go and play football, but we're lacrosse players. Um, so it, it, it affects every part of your life. Um, so to not just pick up a new sport, but become a different person, um, I think is the, is the biggest part of our game. world seemed so small to me when I was a kid. I guess I never really knew it was even out there until I found lacrosse. It was like this big old freight train came rolling through our sleepy little town carrying magic that I'd never seen before. It was amazing. It woke me up and opened up my eyes to adventure. Lacrosse has allowed me to see so much of the world over the past 20 years and meet some of the most incredible people. And to me, that's what makes this journey what it truly is. It's the people. About 10 years ago, I decided to buy a video camera so I could document some of these amazing trips and moments I was experiencing. I wanted to shed light on some of the pathfinders out there that are truly blazing the trail and pumping blood into our sport. I never really knew how to release all of this footage until now. This is the Pathfinder series. First stop, Montana. Yeah, let's do it. Let's split up and hit these schools because they're gonna get out in five minutes. minutes. Yeah. Yeah, we're uh, working on starting up some youth programs up here. Oh, really? Yep. Cross is a good game. Yeah. Invented by Indians. Yep. yep. Sir. Exactly. Yeah, they need a lot of just kids moving around, getting exercise. Right. Yeah, we came up here last year with the Let's Move initiative. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's what I've seen you guys. Yeah, that, that's where we did the clinic last year. And, uh, you know, now we're trying to basically find people who are willing to coach up here. Um, and our job would be to get them all the equipment and everything that they can. All the resources start. How old do they got to be? Uh, in Missoula, where I run the programs, we have uh, U7 as our youngest group. Um, so five and six year olds. Cool. Yeah. Well, this one's six. Yeah. I got one that's eight, ten, twelve, but he's in Alaska. You get like three or four kids to get hooked on this. Next year they get two more of their buddies. You know, there's like a tough team start. You guys ever play lacrosse? Yeah. In gym yeah. class? Yeah. You want to play for my team next year? I'm going to start a team here. You want to play for me? Yes, sir. Is there a stick or two? Well, we'll be in your gym class soon. Are you going in that school? Yeah, we'll be at that school. We'll be at all the schools. See ya. See you guys. How'd it go? It's funny, like, you know, nobody's like, oh yeah, that's a really shitty idea. Yeah. Everybody's like, yeah, that's a really good idea. We yeah. should get it going. It's just about how do you get it going. Coach. Ed is her brother who I went to school with and he like moved back up here and uh, he said that he might be able to be the coach. He was like, oh, never yeah? played lacrosse or anything, but. Uh, that's what it's going to take, unfortunately, up here. Yeah. You, you have to get someone that's just coached something right. because right. I think you're going to find someone with a lot of experience and no. wants to actually live here in Browning. Right. I came out to school here 10 years ago. Um, the club team was, uh, it existed, but it was pretty ragtag. We were playing with hand-me-down uniforms from the football team and, and all kinds of stuff. And uh, now that I've been doing lacrosse for years and it's, it's gotten fairly established in town, we have you know over 300 youth players playing in Missoula and the college team's been around for more than 15 years now. And I, I feel like I'm now just 
tapping the surface because there's so much more that can be done. We're really in a unique position to not 40 years from now, I'm gonna get the backstory that is just great. And even in a 10 year span, uh, we had two players in our first youth lacrosse program that we ran. Uh, I spent all summer handing out flyers at the parks and trying to recruit parents. Two kids signed up um, to have 300 kids playing in teams at every level down to U7 right now is like, it's a, it's a great thing. What's your main goal with, with all of this? Um, I think that just because, you know, somebody presented the opportunity to me years ago, they said, this is the sport, you should try it. I want to be able to present that option to everybody out here. Um, you know, I don't think that the sport should be restrictive by where you happen to grow up. You should have the opportunity to try to play. It's not for everybody. Not every, I, you know, I don't think that every person in Montana is going to end up being a lacrosse player. But I think that every kid should get the choice if they want to be or not. And right now, they don't know that they have the choice. Um, so that's pretty much the deal is trying to make sure that they know there's this other sport out there. It's another option for you guys. It might not be for everybody, but for the ones that it is for, it's going to change your whole life. Um, and so we just try to introduce the game to as many new kids as we possibly can um, and, and hope it sticks. I really think that this game has, has medicine. I've heard a lot of people refer to lacrosse as medicine over the years. What is it about the sport that gives it this power? And why do so many people feel it? On this particular trip through Montana, Kevin and I hitched a ride with our friends Jeff Brunel and Connor Wilson. The plan was a 14-day journey visiting lacrosse communities and Native American reservations. We were also excited to be witnessing the big sky and the boom of lacrosse in Montana. But on the morning of the fourth day, we were hit with the worst news imaginable. Connor got a call informing him that his mother had suddenly passed away. None of us knew what to do or say. We all just did our best to console him. But what he said to me will forever be ingrained in my memory. When I asked him if there was anything that I could do, he told me that all he wanted to do was play catch. He said he needed to be on the field, around lacrosse players, with a stick in his hands. For those of you that don't believe that lacrosse has special powers, let me tell you, I witnessed it firsthand. High character, right? Playing team lacrosse, moving that ball. And I saw that today. And I wanted to share some with you guys. That's uh, my mom passed away yesterday, and the chance to come out and see you guys play, okay, playing the way you did, that was medicine. For me. okay. It was a beautiful thing to see. And I really appreciate you guys coming out here. It was an honor to watch you play. And I hope you stick with the game, take it as far as you can. You know, my mom supported me in what I did. She really cared about that. You know, she knew that I, I love this sport. Okay, I can see it in a lot of you. You love it too. It's a great thing. It can really take you far places. Okay. I'd be in a much more serious stress right now. Okay, I'd be an emotional wreck if it weren't for lacrosse. If it weren't for seeing you guys come out here and play the way you did. Okay, so thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Creator, thank you for this game. Thank you for our time together as a community. Thank you for all these young men and women coming out to join us here. May our play today honor you and be pleasing to you. May it bring us together and make us better men and women and children. Bind us together as a community. Make us stronger, make us more unified. For our friend Connor, who's had a great loss, this is his work. This is your work, and this is your game. Be with Connor as he travels home, as he goes through the grieving process. And be with us here. Keep us safe from injury, and keep us friends. Thank you. <laughs>